Good day. It is Christmas, and I want to welcome you as the St. George's family gathers together virtually to celebrate the birth of the Christ child in our midst. And so I say to you, God comes to us in the cry of a child. For there we are, for there we welcome. God comes to us in the whisper of a loving mother. Let every heart prepare in grace. God comes to us, abides in us. Let every heart prepare to receive the Christ. God of grace and glory, we praise you from the heights and from the depths, in the heavens, on earth, and from the seas, in the courts of power, and from the sidewalks of our lives. Your splendor shines from a manger where the light of the world was born to pierce the darkness. In fragile flesh, you are revealed to us face to face. And so we gather with all people in every place who have glimpsed your salvation and grace to rejoice in your love born for us. Together, we worship and praise you as creator, son, and spirit source of life, glorious light, wisdom of the ages. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbors, as together we say, source of all hope, you invite us to live in the light and discover the splendor of your glory. We confess we often choose to remain in the darkness instead. We allow our fears and hurts to hold us hostage. Our expectations of life prevent us from seeing new and real possibilities. You offer us unconditional love, but we expect others to earn our love. Forgive us. May the new life born in the major awaken new life in us and allow hope to dawn in the year ahead. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now the collect for Christmas. God of promise. From ancient times, you have sustained your people. With Mary and Joseph, teach us to treasure in our hearts the birth of Jesus. And with shepherds and angels, lead us to praise the holy child of Bethlehem, in whose name we pray. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger who announces peace, who brings us good news, who announces salvation, who says unto Zion, your God reigns. Listen, your sentinels lift up their voices. Together they sing for joy. For in the plain sight they see the returns of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together into singing, you ruins of Jerusalem. The Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations. And all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. The word of our Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. A reading from the letter of Paul the Apostle to Titus. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious approaching of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. 
Let no man despise thee. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen. reading from the Gospel according to St. Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. She gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I I am bringing you good news of great joy, for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. And when they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God 
for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Whether you are watching this video Christmas Eve or Christmas Day, doesn't matter. This is, uh, this is a holy moment. This is a sacred, sacred moment. So let me, let me ask you, what, what do you bring to this moment in time? I suspect for some of you, you bring nagging doubt. The doubt that wonders, but desperately, desperately hopes that this story is about real people. Mary and Joseph, some unnamed shepherds, a couple of innkeepers who said they had no rooms, and one who said the best he could offer was a stable out back. People like you who never believed never expected that they would touch God. People who would come to accept that life was pretty much about what you can make of it, right here, right now. What do you bring to this moment in time? My hunch is after the last 12 months, some of you are bringing loneliness, and heartache and fear. Pandemic has done that to us. It has taken so many lives. It has caused so much pain. It has confronted the world. It has confronted us with our mortality. We have been isolated, separated from people we love. And we have come to feel like prisoners in our own homes, afraid of the world outside. And when we're out on the street and someone sneezes, it's like someone shot a gun. The scars of COVID, the threat of COVID, they won't heal and go away. And so we gather together virtually to celebrate the birth of the Christ child, and, and we do it together, but apart. What do you bring to this moment? Some of you bring hope, the wild and, and crazy kind of hope that makes you go out and buy lottery tickets and fantasize that if only you won a million dollars, everything would change. Or perhaps the desperate hope that allows you to take another breath in the hospital waiting room. Or perhaps that expectant, persistent hope that believes that somehow, some way, tomorrow, next week, Next year, life is, is going to be different. What do you bring to this moment? See, I, I just know that some of you, I, I know that some of you bring, you no, know, regardless of how old you are, you bring the child that is within you, the child that does not want to be found out. You bring the child that still dresses up in big people's clothes, and dreams about what you're going to do when you finally grow up. You bring the child that is within you, that is still captivated, entranced, in awe of the magic of Christmas. What do you bring to this moment? I suspect that for most of you, for most of us, we bring sentimentality. The kind of sentimentality 
that drove us, whether we liked it or not, out to shop because it's that time of year. The sentimentality that forced us grudgingly to learn how to spend our money online because there are no masks required. The sentimentality that fills our hearts and our minds today with incredible, wonderful, beautiful memories of Christmas's past. The sentimentality that tugs at our hearts when we remember those people we love who aren't with us anymore, the ones who will never celebrate Christmas with us again. The sentimentality that makes us cry just a few tears whenever we quietly sing Silent Night. Whatever you bring, whatever you bring to this incredible, incredible moment, whether it's happiness for being surrounded by family and friends, thank you, Zoom and FaceTime, whether it's thankfulness for good health or frustration for physical challenges, whether it's the exuberance of youth or fear of growing old, whether it's hopes and dreams or fears and nightmares, whatever you bring, ultimately, it's, it's the story that draws us, isn't it? It is the amazing story that we need to hear, we long to hear. It is that amazing story that our world desperately, desperately needs to hear. And so tonight, on, on, on this holy, nostalgic, magical, sacred, sacred night or sacred morning, we, we are linked, you and I, to Mary and, and, and to Joseph, to some unknown shepherds, to a couple of innkeepers who said the best that they could offer was to say no room in the inn, and one who was able to find space in the stable out back. We are linked to all of us. And, and it feels so good. I want to invite you. I want to invite you to take a moment and in, in your mind's eye, gaze into that cold, dark stable. Just gaze in <clears throat> to that cold, dark stable and see the chubby hands of the newborn reaching out from the feeding trough, getting ready to embrace the whole world. I, I think in many ways that is the best descriptor of Christmas. I, I believe that Christmas, it is about God's hugs for a confused and shattered and broken heart. It is about God's hugs for a desperate world. It is about God's hugs that will give us strength and hope. Now, whatever, whatever you bring to this precious, precious moment, leave it at the feet of the child. Just leave it there. And before you go, reach out. Reach out and touch the baby tenderly and lovingly. It won't bite. 
and feel the hope and the peace that only that child can give you. And know this, know this, know that there is beauty and wonder and hope and joy in our world because of the birth of this infant. And before you go, allow yourself just for a moment to fall into the embrace of a God who loves you and will never let you go. My friends, a child is born for you this day. And his name, his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Trust, trust in that child. Find hope and peace in that child. God bless you and have a blessed, holy, and loving Christmas with those you love and pray for. Amen. We say together the Shema, saying, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. prayers of the people. God of love, as we celebrate the birth and the life of Jesus, our Savior, we are filled with thanks. Our gratitude overflows in prayers for our world, the world you love. We pray for all children, guard their minds, protect their bodies, strengthen their character and give them joy. Help them look to the future with hope and trust. We pray for the most aged among us, those whom Simeon and Anna bring to mind. Protect them in the midst of the ongoing pandemic and reassure them of their value to you and to us, even when we cannot meet together. 
We pray for those whose hearts are filled with pain and fear. We pray for those for whom Christmas is linked with loss or grief. Surround each one with a strong sense of your comforting presence. We pray for those who do not have enough to eat and for those who lack adequate shelter in our community and in desperate corners of the world. For those who eat alone without the comfort of human contact and for those whose hearts and lives have been broken by trauma and loss and for those who struggle with the many costs of the pandemic. Surround each one with a strong sense of your comforting presence. We pray for family members and friends, those nearby and those we could not meet this year. Remind them of our steadfast love and to any who are struggling this season, O oh God, give your gift of peace. As the year draws to a close, we surrender to you, O oh God, the challenge it has held for us so that they will not remain as burdens. Remind us of the good things that have offered us encouragement in time of isolation. We give you thanks for the people who continue to care for us and care about us. Give us courage and wisdom for the year ahead. We pray for our leaders that they will have wisdom and generosity of spirit for the decisions they must make on our behalf. Guide scientists working to produce vaccines against COVID-19 and support all those essential workers whose faithfulness to their responsibilities helps us all cope in these difficult days. Grant us all the hope, joy, and peace we find through trusting you as we pray together the words Jesus taught us. In the words that Jesus taught us, we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give, Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now the grace of Bethlehem's matchless child, the love of God who never ceases to amaze, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit who never wearies be with you this holy night, this holy day, and forevermore. Amen. Amen.